let's take a look at our second objective, which is to use function notation to evaluate functions. And let me remind you of what function notation actually is. When we say that y is a function of x, we can write this symbolically as y is equal to f of x. So this means that every input of x corresponds to exactly one output value y. The key to this is that the letter in parentheses is your input and that whole function notation really represents just the output. So f of x means what is the y value for a, good, a given x value. In other words, how do the y and the x relate to one another? So if I use this notation, s is equal to g of t, what would that mean? That means that s is a function of t, meaning for every input of t, there is exactly one output value of s. So the relationship there is defined between the values of t and s. Now this g could be anything, it could be f, it could be p, it doesn't matter what letter we use to name the function, so just keep in mind that it's just a a naming device that really doesn't mean anything um, for you to get worried about there. Now to evaluate a function means that we're trying to find the output of the function at a particular input. So to do this we're going to substitute the given input value into the function in place of the variable and simplify. So I have a few exercises that we're going to go through. You may want to even um, pause the video at this point and see if you can do these on your own since hopefully this is review for you. Um, and then you can start it back up and make sure that you got these correct. So our first example that we're going to do is to evaluate the function 3x squared plus 2x at negative 4. So remember what we're going to do, our negative 4 is our input, so it's going to replace the x and then we're just going to use order of operations to simplify. So this would be what, 3 times 16, which is 48, minus 8, which is 40. Now we can evaluate functions at things other than numbers. We can plug in algebraic expressions into functions. So if I wanted to find f of a, that simply means to replace the variable x with what's inside parentheses, which is a. So that becomes 3a squared plus 2a. So when we input a function, if you will, or an algebraic expression, we're going to come up with another algebraic expression to represent that function. What about f of x plus h? That would mean to replace the letter x with what is inside parentheses, which is x plus h. And then digging back into your algebraic skills to square x plus h, we would get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared and then distributing gives us plus 2x plus 2h. So finally we would come up with 3x squared plus 6xh plus 3h squared plus 2x plus 2h. That doesn't look very pretty, not anything else we can do to that at this time. Now let's take a look at our second example. We have the function g of x, which is equal to 1 over x squared minus 4. So our first example was a quadratic function. This is a rational function. To find g of 0, we're going to have 1 over 0 squared minus 4. When we simplify that, we will get negative 1 fourth. What about g of negative 2? We would have g or 1 over negative 2 squared minus 4, which is 1 over what? 
you have 4 minus 4, which is 0. Notice that that is undefined. So we have found a function that is not defined for every input value, and that's going to be important in our next objective. Now what about g of negative x? Again, we can plug in and place of that variable anything we want, as long as it really makes it defined. If we plug in negative x in place of x and square it, we would get 1 over, well what happens when you square a negative x? Yeah, you just get x squared. So this is an interesting function. When I substitute in negative x, I get the original function back. And that's a property called, um, it has symmetry, and it's something called an even function, which we'll get into in a later section. And then let's do one other example for evaluating functions. And this particular one is a piecewise defined function. But um, what we would have to do for this function is look at our input value and determine which piece of the domain it satisfies. And whichever piece it satisfies is the function rule that we're going to substitute in. So f of 0, to find that, I notice that 0 is less than 2. So the first rule applies. So I would have 4 times 0 minus 8, which is simply negative 8. Now please understand I don't plug 0 into each of those because in doing I would get two output values which is a contradiction to the definition of a function. For a function, for every input there's only one output. What about f of 2? Be careful here. 2 is not less than itself so the first rule does not apply but 2 is greater than or equal to itself so I would have to plug into the second rule and following order of operations, I square my 2 first. So this would be 1 minus 3 times 4, or 1 minus 12, which is negative 11. And then f of negative 3, negative 3 satisfies which part? Right, the first part, because it is less than 2. So I would have 4 times negative 3 minus 8, which is negative 12 minus 8, which would be negative 20.